Year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of thistles by Ted Hughes in preparation for your poetry exam. The poem. Against the rubber tongues of cows and the hoeing hands of men, thistles spike the summer air or crackle open under a blue-black pressure. Everyone a revengeful burst of resurrection, a grasped fistful of splintered weapons and Icelandic frost thrust up from the underground stain of a decayed viking. They are like pale hair and the gutturals of dialects, Everyone manages a plume of blood. Then they grow grey like men, mown down. It is a feud. Their sons appear, stiff with weapons, fighting back over the same ground. So our first question then is, what is the poem about? The poem Thistles by Ted Hughes describes the life cycle of the thistles, as in um, the flower, and how difficult it is to get rid of them. Ted Hughes argues that the world will never live in peace, that wars will always emerge through memories in the way that thistles spring back through seeds. Okay, what structural devices does Ted Hughes use? Well, first of all, um, as we looked at the poem there, we can see that it is regular stanzas and the regular stanzas represent the power of nature. As I said before, when I was talking about what happens in the poem, Ted Hughes is talking about um, the power of nature. So you can't, you can't really get rid of the thistles because their seeds um, then gr grow back new thistles, if you like. So they are always replaced. So the regular stanza shows the power of nature. And actually the idea that in the face of nature, mankind will always lose. Because, um, as I say, we see the power of nature Um for instance, if, if anyone doesn't understand what I mean by the power of nature, um, this is not related to the poem, I'm just talking about nature. Um, storms, um, weather, uh, earthquakes, things like that is the power of nature and we are helpless in the face of it. Um, and actually what, what we see here is that um, human conflict um, seems futile really, doesn't it? Um Ted Hughes has opted to use free verse, okay, so the poem doesn't rhyme, and that creates a very sombre tone underneath the poem, um, very serious messages being sent here about um, conflict and the fact that Ted Hughes thinks uh, conflict will always last, and, and, and actually, when we think about it, he's quite right, and that leads us to enjambment. So the free verse creates this sombre tone, where we realise that the thistles are always replaced um, and we realise that actually they're very dangerous and that and that nature is powerful. And then we've got enjambment. And enjambment here solidifies this idea of never-ending conflicts um, within mankind. And if we, if we look at the poem specifically, he dates mankind's struggles back to the Vikings and... Actually, what we can um, imply from this and the use of enjambment um, is that conflict and war and battles will be, within mankind will continue for the foreseeable future. Um, you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're not you're not stupid, but we've had the Vikings, haven't we? Um, we've had World War One, World War Two, and um, we had the Cold War. We've had um, the recent um, bombings in Paris. So it's this idea, this awful as I say, a sombre idea that um, mankind will always find itself in conflicts and in battles and in wars, which is, which, as I say, is, is, a, sad, is a sad idea. And then finally, Ted Hughes does use Shazera. Um, I think it's only on three occasions, three or four occasions. Um, double check me on that. There's one in stanza two and there's three in stanza four, I think. So he does use Shazera. And remember, Shazera is a pause within a poetic line. I'll just say that again. Shazera is a pause within a poetic line. And um, that is, it's very stoppy starty, isn't it? And that is the chopping down of the thistles or the destruction of the thistles and the fact that they are replaced by the seeds, aren't they? So what, once a thistle has been destroyed, it is, it is replaced. And that is where, again, the war imagery comes in because we know that army men are replaced. If, a, if an army man um, is killed, he is replaced. Okay, so there's that link um, that Ted Hughes is giving us through through this extended metaphor of thistles um, and, and this idea of, of war and battles. Okay, 
Don't forget to pause the video if you need to make notes. And as I always say, poetry is interpretation. So if you don't agree with anything I say, that's absolutely fine. All right. Stanza one. Against the rubber tongues of cows and the hoeing hands of men, thistle spike the summer air or crackle open under a blue black pressure. Right. Okay. So the title thistles is a metaphor, okay, because the thistles symbolise a couple of things. One is the negative feelings that Ted Hughes ha um, explores throughout the poem and how he thinks that these feelings never go away. So as I said before, the thistle um, um, uses its seeds, obviously, to grow back. The, th the, 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 the seeds fall or burst out of the thistle and then obviously more thistles grow. And actually, the metaphor there is, is it's human emotion and it's our feelings never go away. Our feelings never go away in relation to conflict, in relation to sometimes disagreement. Um, and it's certainly in relation to um, wars and battles. Um, the title straight away, though, introduces the element of nature. And as I said earlier, that is, is one of the big themes. The title is short. Its effectiveness is heightened because it encourages the reader's imagination because it makes us think, well, actually, what is it that Ted Hughes is telling us? And we capture a sharp, pain-afflicting object because a thistle has got, like, sharp spikes on it. It's a sharp, pointed plant, a harsh plant, cold and pointy, point, uh, pointy, sorry, and it is there to damage, damage its surroundings. OK, so make sure we get that down. A thistle, it's um, sharp, it's pointy. It is there to damage its surroundings, to inflict pain. So this idea and the image of war being like the formidable injuring spikes of a thistle, Hughes presents that throughout the poem, right? So as I say, the extended metaphor throughout the poem is that the thistles and the fact that they are dangerous is paralleled with an image of war. Okay, that, there's quite a lot of information in that box there, so make sure you do pause the video and, and, and make notes of, obviously, which parts you may need. Okay. Um, thistles spike the summer air, another metaphor. Again, it's imagery. Ted Hughes loves imagery, doesn't he? Um, and it's, the, it's an image of a thistle attacking the summer. So once again, we say the power of nature. Now, it, what do we associate with summer? Well, we usually associate something positive, something calm, idyllic, tranquil, uh, peaceful. And the thistle is attacking this peaceful image. So once again, when you apply that to like a war situation, we have had wars um, where a peaceful place perhaps has been attacked. So, for instance, I mean, just a couple off the top of my head, Kurdistan was attacked by Iraq. Paris was attacked, wasn't it? Um, not so long ago. So it's it's this idea, again, of uh, peace and tranquility being ruined by violence and conflict. All right. Um, from the very beginning of the poem, Ted Hughes is very negative through his language. And as we see there, through the two adjectives, Blue and black. Now, blue and black again gives this gives us this sombre feeling, but um, the alliteration implies a bruise, it, the image of a bruise, and again, it's caused by a physical contact. Well, how do we get bruises? Well, we get bruises when we bump into things or if we get hit. Um, so again, we've got this idea of pain. Now, as I said earlier, a thistle inflicts pain. On its surroundings, probably on you if you if you pick it up, um by the by the pointy bit, um so once again we've got this idea of of pain being caused by the thistle and obviously by war. Okay, I've got more to say about stanza one, which I shall do now. Um, so in the first line of the poem, against the rubber tongues of cows and the hoeing hands of men, the tongues of the cows are rough and thick, because obviously they're being compared to rubber there. OK, metaphor, rubber tongues of cows. It's not really rubber, is it? Um, and that leads us back to the title of the thistles being harsh. Um, this could be contradicted by the idea that um, a cow's tongue is soft, um, but not smooth. But again, it's this harsh image of nature 
isn't it? Um, the word thistles is used in line two straight away. And, and as I said just before, the thistle is sharp and pointy and it pierces the summer air. Um, and, and obviously he's given us an ill-favoured image here by showing us how the strength of war destroys the beauty of nature, um, much like mankind destroying the natural world. Now, I know I said earlier that the power of nature... Um, uh, it's it's an it's an inevitability, isn't it? That nature's powerful because of obviously all the things I listed about the natural world. But it is this we've got this backdrop in the poem Thistles about war destroying nature, doesn't it? And it destroys natural beauty and it destroys um, a world that could be so beautiful. So just remember just to think of that image because it, it, it is a powerful image that the idea that the thistles spike the summer air and destroy this natural scene we've got. And finally for stanza one, despite human attempts to destroy the thistles with hoeing hands, yeah? So you hoe, you know, you hoe the weeds or you, um, you hoe the, um, the farmers do the hoeing, don't they? Where they, you know, they dig up all the um, weeds or all the plants that they don't want um, destroying their crops or whatnot. Um, so despite human attempt to destroy the thistles with hoeing hands that later have mown down the plants, the thistles come back. And not only do they come back, but they fight back, giving humans who try to destroy them a plume of blood. So if we try to destroy the thistle, we get injured. As I said earlier, this idea that it's got a spike and this image of a bruise, okay? And in this poem, nature is not... Um, it's not used by humans, um, but it's violent and destructive and actually it will defend itself. Stanza two. Everyone a revengeful burst of resurrection, a grasped fistful of splintered weapons and Icelandic frost thrust up. So um, the thistles pollinate and reproduce. Everyone a revengeful burst. And this conveys that there is a motive and a reason that they are reproduced other than uh, just to maintain their species, that obviously it's this idea that they are going to fight and they are going to defend themselves against mankind. So it's this idea that there's a continuous war happening. Again, is it that Ted Hughes is subtly saying to us that um, because of the very nature of human beings that we'll, we, we'll always have conflict and we'll always have battle and we'll always have war? And, and, and in that idea lies something very sad and something very destructive about mankind. And burst there is a really violent verb, isn't it? And it sounds destructive. And it's this image of something splitting, i.e. the thistle flower, and letting go of its um, its contents. Um, so obviously when the thistle bursts open, all of the seeds land so they can um, produce more. And, and revengeful um, refers to the punishment of somebody in retaliation to cause harm so it's this idea that we retaliate um to inflict pain on other people um we try to hurt other people uh, and again in that lies something very something very sad everyone sounds like there is no compromise they are all prepared for war and to fight. Every one. So every single thistle is used accordingly. Again, every single soldier um, knows his role, knows his goal, knows his task. Can I just apologise, guys? I have put revengeful as a noun there apologies that's an adjective um sorry type and error um revengeful is an adjective not a noun i apologize um if we carry on throughout the poem ted hughes associates thistles with vikings and vikings are a culture we associate with violence we are told that they thrust up um like splintered weapons look at that line splintered weapons and again, it's this comparison to war and a reminder that the thistles are sharp. If we carry on with stanza two, Ted Hughes has given the thistles human features and emotions, such as the ability to take revenge. So through this personification, 
Hughes expresses his speculation of how the thistles have their own purpose in life. So he's br he really has brought the thistles to life here, Ted Hughes, hasn't he? With this idea that they can take revenge on something. Now, does that sound trivial? Does that sound silly? And again, is this idea that mankind and human beings, when they when, when we take revenge on other people, it's um, foolish, perhaps? It seems that history repeats itself because of nature. Human beings are also a part of nature itself. This is conveyed through the comparisons between the humans and the thistles. So, of resurrection, a grasped fistful of splintered weapons and Icelandic frost thrust up. So here we encounter the thistles ready and armed for a battle. They've got their splintered weapons and look at the Icelandic frost. It's a very cold image that, isn't it? And it thrusts up. So they are prepared to battle and and fight. Stanza three. From the underground stain of a decayed Viking, they are like pale hair and the gutturals of dialects. Everyone manages a plume of blood. As I said earlier, we've got that link to the Vikings and we associate it with violence. But he uses the simile, they are like pale hair and the gutturals of dialects. And it's an image of a Viking through the hair, obviously. You know, we all have that image of a stereotypical Viking having uh, long, like, whitey blonde hair, um, perhaps having a plait in it, um, long beard, very stereotypical. So we have this um, image of a Viking through the hair, but also the harsh way that they would speak. Okay, so not only in the stanza above did we have this cold image of the Icelandic frost and the splintered weapons, but now we have this harsh dialect that the Vikings would use and would speak in. Um, metaphor from the underground stain of a decayed Viking is the repetitive cycle of nature and how it in outlasts human endeavour, doesn't it? Um, as I said before, the, the thistle will continue to um, like eject its seeds and they will continue to grow, whereas the Vikings... Um, have wiped out were wiped out, and that that is shown in the word decayed. It's gone away, okay. Whereas nature actually hasn't. Um, everyone manages a plume of blood. Look, we've got that repetition of everyone again. There is no comparison. All of the thistles have a job. All of the seeds have a job. They are prepared for war. They are prepared to reproduce. They are prepared to fight. But most importantly, they will be successful. And we know they're successful because um, they uh, managed to hurt us. We know that from the opening when we ha had the bruise. And now we've got this idea of a plume of blood. So again, that's an easy comparison to war. Obviously, people are injured in war. People die in war. And, and that is being compared to the sharp, pointy um, aspect of the thistle, if you like. And stanza four. Then they grow great like men, mown down, it is a feud. Their sons appear stiff with weapons, fighting back over the same ground. Um, then they grow grey like men. So the thistles come back, don't they? They grow grey like men, mown down, it is a feud. Their sons appear, fighting back over the same ground. So the thistles come, by, come back, fighting over the same ground after the grey men. So that is... a um, the older thistles they're being personified are cut down. So basically, obviously, we've got this image of when the older soldiers are killed, they are replaced by younger soldiers. When the older thistles are um, destroyed, they are replaced by um, more thistles. Um, so partially out of vengeance and a, a desire to gain back lost land um, or, a, or a desire to win a battle or a desire to defend oneself. The thistle is replaced, much like the army men are replaced. It's this endless cycle, and that is why he uses enjambment, this repetitive cycle of war, men being replaced in battle, and nature as well. The poem associates the cycle of violence, so the violent cutting down and growing again, with the human cycles of war over territory and, and, and trying to protect one's country. Um, obviously, I said you've got the simile there, like men mown down. 
Look at that, like men mourn down, mourn down. Isn't that a horrible image? And obviously, um, it reminds us again of like cutting the grass. I know that sounds trivial, but that is us, mankind destroying nature, isn't it? And and cutting the grass, and guess what? It grows back. We cut the grass, it grows back. We cut the grass, it grows back. It is this cycle. Um, notice how it is a feud that is isolated there by the um the comma and the full stop. So there's your shazira. Yeah, that I mentioned earlier in structure. And this it is a feud actually sums up. A lot of what Ted Hughes is saying that m mankind always always feuds with one another. Okay. Um, the extended metaphor obviously continues throughout the poem of the thistles being compared to uh, soldiers in a battle. So don't forget that the title is extended metaphor because yes, okay, he's talking about the thistles as a plant, but he's also extending that to battles, war, conflict um, and army men. Their sons appear stiff with weapons, fighting back over the same ground. Look at fighting back over the same ground. Look at that, the same ground. You know, it's this war never ends. They're fighting for the same thing again. Um, so it's this idea that men can be fighting, but it won't be good enough. And therefore, their sons or the next generation will take their place. And guess what? They're fighting the same battle. And that is why earlier I said it's futile, isn't it? All this conflict. I know that sounds like a massive generalisation, but it's futile in the sense that, in this poem, that the battle continues, the same battle continues, the same battle continues, and nobody's getting anywhere and nobody's resolving anything. Okay? Um, I hope this was useful. Don't forget, if you need to go back through the video, uh, do so. I do sometimes talk very quickly. Um... Make sure you make, note down everything that you that you possibly need. The structural devices, particularly where there's tricky spelling in words such as Shazira. Um, so note that down. And if you need any more of my videos, just type Stacey Ray into YouTube. That's S-T-A-C-E-Y. And Ray is R-E-A-Y. I hope this was useful and good luck in your poetry exam.